Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So today we're going to be talking about some more registers in x86, going through the 32-bit and the 64-bit registers. So the 386 was the first 32-bit uh, CPU for x86, and in the 32-bit days what we got was, um, well, extra 32-bit general purpose registers, but they're the same names as before, except they've got an A appended to the end, or prefixed at the end. So uh, AX gets a 32-bit version, which is EAX. Uh, BX gets a 32-bit version, which is EBX, and then we get, you know, EDI, EBP. Yeah, so all of the general purpose registers got expanded to 32 bits, and it's the same name, but with an E attached to the start uh, when you're doing instructions. Uh, so it's always important to remember that CX is the low 16 bits of ECX. Yeah, and just as before, CH and CL are parts of CX. So these are, these are all the same register. Um, just the 32-bit version is called ECX, the 16-bit version is called CX, and then of course you can access the two low 8 bits as well. Alright, we will have a bit of a look at this in the um, registers window in Visual Studio at the end, because I want to demo something that's very, very strange. Hello, something's happened to my... I don't know. Um, okay, so the 386, or the 32-bit registers, we also get EIP, which is a 32-bit version of the instruction pointer. We get E-flags, which is a 32-bit version of flags. Um, you tend to really only use the low 16 bits of flags anyway, since uh, a lot of the upper bits aren't defined. And we also get more segment registers, but as I've mentioned before, uh, we don't really use segmented memory anymore, so the segment registers are pretty pointless. Alright, but then the Pentium 4 came along, and we got ourselves the first 64-bit uh, x86 CPU. And this is where really interesting things started to happen. We finally got a big boost to our register set. All right, let's just go through what happened. So first of all, you can see that the low end just here is still the normal 32-bit registers that we just introduced. Uh, we also get the 64-bit version, which is the same name, but with an R um, prefix at the start. So EAX now gets the 64-bit version, which is RAX. And then we get RBX, RCX, RDX, RSI, etc. Um, so that's nice and easy, but something else interesting happened with the other registers. We never used to be able to access the low uh, bytes. Yeah, so SI, um, we never used to be able to access the lowest byte, but we can. In uh, X64, we can. So it's called SIL or SI low. Uh, likewise, we can now access the low byte of DI. It's called DIL. Yeah, and we got uh, SPL, BPL. Uh, so that's that's another change just there, and RSI, RDI, RSP, and RBP are just the 64-bit versions of those uh, ESI, EDI, ESP, and EBP. So the other really cool thing that we got was another eight general purpose registers, and they're called just R8, R9, R10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then R flags got extended to 64 bits as well. But these new registers. Uh, you can access with uh, just the R and then the number, which means the 64-bit version. Or you can say R8D to access the 32-bit version of R8, these new 64-bit registers. Uh, R8W to access the low 16 bits of R8. Or R8B to access the low 8 bits of R8. So in total, we've now got um, 16 general purpose registers. What's really happened is the x86 general purpose register set is 16 registers wide, and they started to be named normally um, with these R ones, except for backwards compatibility, we still call RAX RAX, instead of calling it R0. Uh, but it's really just R0, so RAX would be R0, RBX would be R1, RCX would be R2, etc., all the way through to R15. Yeah, but it's just backwards compatibility that we've got these strange names for the first eight. Uh, I want to mention that R8D stands for R8D word, or double word. Yeah, 32 bits is a D word, a double word. And R8W means R8 word, or the lowest word of uh, R8. Yeah, word 16 bits. And then, of course, R8B stands for R8 byte, the lowest byte. Okay, so that's the register set as it stands today, the, the general purpose register set. Now, there is something to be aware of, and I'll demo this in just a second. When you use the 32-bit versions of the registers, so say EAX, 
uh, any instruction that uses EAX pretty much, it zeroes the top 32 bits of the 64-bit register. That's really unusual, and I can't think of any good reason why it does that, but that's just what happens, so you do have to be aware of that. I want to say that it's not wrong to use 32-bit instructions in 64-bit mode. It's perfectly normal. Um, there's no reason that you would do everything with 64-bit integers. I mean, some data just doesn't take up 64 bits. Yeah, so it's, it's perfectly normal to use these smaller uh, data types in 64-bit mode, but do be aware that operations on 60, oh, sorry, operations on 32-bit integers will uh, zero the top of the 64-bit versions. And that's only 32-bit operations, not 8-bit or 16-bit. Okay, and there's a bunch more registers, but we'll have a look at those later. So what I want to do now is uh, just, just a little demo of what I was just saying. So if we've got something here, we say, um, well, let's just mov rax negative 1. So negative 1 in 2's complement just means ones across the entire register. So at that point there, we should see in the registers window, uh, nothing but Fs. Uh, then if we say something like mov uh, al, the lowest byte, oh, we'll just put five in there. Um, what we'll see then is that the lowest byte of rax will indeed change to five, but the rest won't change. Uh, likewise, we could say mov ax, uh, 17 or something. That's gonna move 17 into the lowest word of eax without changing the top uh, but if we say something like mov eax1 we'll see what i was talking about it's gonna zero the top yeah i don't really know why but let's just have a bit of a demo okay here's my registers window again if you don't know how to open up the registers window you just go to debug windows and registers yeah i think you have to turn it to expert mode if you're in visual studio 2010 Someone left a comment on another video mentioning that, and uh, I remember that too from before. That's annoying, but that's how they did it. Okay, so after the first instruction, uh, we've got ourselves a bunch of wonderful little Fs, which is hexadecimal for negative one in uh, RAX. After the second instruction, it moves five into the lowest byte, or AL, and it doesn't change the top. After the third instruction, we've just moved something into the lowest uh, word, or AX. That's uh, 17 in hex, would be 11. And again, it didn't change the top, but there you go. Yeah, so as soon as you do a, an operation with a 32-bit register, the top is wiped. I don't know why, but be careful of it. And it's the same with the other ones, too. So even the newer uh, registers, if we change this to, say... I'll just change it to R11. Yeah, all right, R11, and we'll move a bit into the bytes, and then we'll move a bit into the word, and then as soon as we do something with the D word, we should see the same thing. Uh, all right, here's our R11 just here. Uh, the first operation just clears everything to one so that we can see what's going on. Now, then we move a five in the bottom, then a 17, and the top's not changed, but the moment we do a 32-bit operation, the top is zeroed. Uh, it happens with all of them too. So if you're adding 32-bit registers, if you're incrementing them, yeah, pretty much every single operation you do on 32-bit register is going to wipe the top. And that's all I wanted to say. That's the entire general purpose uh, x86 register set for x64. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.